what would you say the theme of Easter is? To some people, it's bunny rabbits and candy, having egg hunts, and just getting together, having a good time. That's that's all good and fun, but to Christians, it's much more than that. You might say that the theme is Christ dying for our sins, but I wouldn't necessarily call that the theme. More, I would call that the result of the theme. Of course, if you've not already caught on to this, the theme that I'm talking about of Easter is forgiveness. I only have two points to touch on, and as this being a Baptist church, I'm sure I'm breaking a rule somewhere. But the first point comes from one of Jesus' parables. This parable specifically is found in Matthew 18, 21 through 35. In this story, Jesus uh, tells of a king who wanted to balance his books and collect the money that people owed him. So he summoned all his servants and to, to pay their debts. And this one servant in particular, his debt was way larger than he could ever repay. Like we're talking with today's standards, like millions of dollars. But in spite of that, the king ordered him to pay it. As I mentioned, the, the man was poor, and there was no way for him to ever repay the massive debt that he owed. And in those days, the king had the authority to sell a person and his family into slavery to, to recruit some of the debt that the debtor owed to him. Or he could throw the person into prison until he was able to repay some of the debt, either him or a relative, someone to come bail him out. In the parable, the king threatened to sell the servant, his family, and all his possessions as a way of regaining part of what was owed. Because of this, the servant fell on his knees and pleaded for the king to be patient with him and that he would pay back everything that he owed in time. Of course, there was no way that he wasn't going to be able to pay back that much money. But because the king was merciful and took pity on the servant, he did an amazing thing. He gave him a second chance. The debt was wiped off the books, but that's not the end of the story. The servant, who should have been very grateful, soon came across an another servant who owed him a very small amount of money. The servant demanded that he be paid and grabbed the man by the throat. The servant that was the debtor in this case begged and said that he would pay it all back in time. Does that sound familiar? But in spite of what the king did to this servant, in this case the servant demanding the money refused and had him thrown into prison until his debt could be repaid. When word of what happened with the two servants reached the king, he was furious. While the king had forgiven the first servant a huge debt, like we're talking like $10 million here in today's standards, the servant could not forgive a measly small debt, maybe like $100, $50, something like that. The king threw the servant into prison until he could repay his debt because of what he did after he was forgiven. But... Here's the kicker. This, Jesus said, is how my Heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. People who hear the story usually side with the king like, yeah, that guy was awful. He definitely deserved it. But if we thought of someone acting so unjustly makes us angry, does it make sense that God would be upset with us who have people who have received his uh, priceless forgiveness, but then harbor pretty grudges against others, plot revenge against those who have harmed them, and admittedly refuse to forgive people when they have been wronged? How could we, when we have been forgiven, the worst and most vile thing we could do, not forgive those around us? Of course, it sounds easy to think about in this abstract manner, but I want you to think of someone who has wronged you personally in your life. Did some either did something you didn't like, or just in general you need to forgive. Okay, now you've got a person in your head. I want you to apply this hypothetical to that person, and we'll come back to it in a minute. 
My second point touches on an idea of exactly what this forgiveness looks like. Exactly what do you need to do to that person you brought into your mind? It's too general just to say that you're supposed to love him or her. Should you stop competing with that individual? Should you become best buddies and golfing partners? Should you go on Caribbean cruises together? Or should you treat him or her like a son or daughter? But Jesus was very precise in choosing a word for love that doesn't imply emotion as much as it suggests attitude and action. I'm sure we have all heard the saying, love is a verb, either from someone or um, there's tons of songs about it. This is the kind of love Jesus is talking about. A love that demands action, not warm, fuzzy feelings toward that person. Instead, that love should be toward people and thinking of it in a way that these people matter to God just like you and me. People who have failed but who are eligible for God's forgiving grace. In fact, the Bible says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amazingly, God's response to our rebellion against him wasn't to declare war on us. Instead, he returned love for evil so the path could be paved for us to be back on good terms with him and have a relationship. And that's the kind of love he wants us to extend to those who have crossed us. But if, if you're still mentally focusing on that individual right now, then my guess is that you still have one question that popped into your mind. Why? Why should I return goodwill for ill will? For those who are followers of Jesus, the answer is simple. He said that this is the pattern of living he wants his people to pursue. We have confidence that he would never ask us to do anything that ultimately work in our detriment. So we can assume because of that, that anything Jesus tells us to do will work for our good. And I want you to think about it this way. What if you sinned against God and he chose not to forgive you? That would end up being a very bleak and reality with no hope of ever being forgiven or getting away from the punishment that comes with not being forgiven. But in spite of that, God chose to forgive us. And that's what he's asking us to do in return. For us, forgiving someone might not cause any harm. It probably won't. If anything, it will have a great benefit on our mental health. Not holding so much anger towards someone could do a lot for your outlook on life or just brighten up your mood during the day, especially when you come to contact with that person. What Christ did took a lot more effort. He came down to live among us for 33 years, and at the end, he died a terrible and excruciating death. So, as we celebrate Easter this year, remember what Christ did for us, and maybe set some things right with people in your life that need forgiving.